All right. So I think we're, I hope we're going to have a relatively uh, straightforward lesson today after the test yesterday. Um, so I want to talk about a function's domain. And this is a concept that students always find intimidating, but we're going to do it over two days, and we're not going to be doing anything really complicated here. We're mainly just going to make an observation, and then a few kind of sub-observations. And the observation I'm going to make is that not every function is defined for every real number. And this is especially true because in this class, um, we are going to work entirely with the real numbers. We're not going to be taking, looking at imaginary stuff. We're not going to be taking square roots of negative numbers. So the sub-observations I said I was going to make We're only going to talk about one of these today, but we cannot divide by zero. So if you have f of x equals one over x, then f of zero, here's a bit of math shorthand for you, does not exist. And, I mean, the statement that you can't divide by zero is one that we hopefully all believe. I don't know why that pi was there, but if we try to divide one by zero on our calculator, we get an error. Let's see. And then I already said this out loud, but I'll write it down. We cannot take the square root of a negative. Cannot take the square root of a negative number. And again, if you've seen the imaginary numbers at all, we're not uh, we're not looking at them in this class. So, like, if f of x is the square root of x, and we try to take the square root of negative four, we can't do it. And again, this just shows up right on our calculator. The square root of negative four, error. So, The numbers where a function is defined, if you take them all together, 
those numbers are called the domain of the function. No, a ruler's domain is the area where that ruler has authority, so that's where that word comes from. And we'd like to talk about finding domains in a, in a pretty limited sense. I mean, finding domains can be a kind of messy proposition. But for now, Let's just take that statement and look at it and see what we get out of it. Suppose f of x were the square root of x. What can we say? Well, we're taking <coughs> the square root of this, bless you, and nothing we take the square root of can be negative. And if you're, if you're using these inequalities, not being negative means we're greater than or equal to zero. So x has to be greater than or equal to zero here. And that's all there is to this problem. The domain of the square root function is the x values that are greater than or equal to zero. And any question of domain involving a square root is going to be basically the same. I mean, suppose we do something more complicated. g of x equals the square root of 5 minus 2x, to just come up with something off the top of my head. Well, we're taking the square root of this, and we know that if we take a square root of something, that something can't be a negative, and not being negative is the same as being greater than or equal to zero. So we need 5 minus 2x to be greater than or equal to zero, and hopefully I probably will not have a chance to grade the tests until Wednesday, so sorry for that delay, but hopefully you uh, didn't struggle too much with this stuff on the test. We'll add 2x to both sides. And we'll divide both sides by 2. And we find that x has to be less than or equal to 5 halves. Let's go back for it. Well, does anybody have any questions? before I go back a few slides. 
So for now, these are the only issues a function might have to keep it from being defined. Can't divide by zero, can't take the square root of a negative number. <coughs> so what if I want to look at and that there are sharp limits to how complicated I want to make these examples. I feel like sometimes textbooks go really complicated for no reason, and then everyone wonders why students struggle with this section. But something like x squared plus the square root of 2x minus 4. Let's ask ourselves, what's the domain of this function? And we'll just take it piece by piece. Let's start by looking at the x squared, and let's make the observation that the x squared is never a problem. The x squared is not going to cause this function to not be defined. I mean, because we vote, we've just, we've got this list of two problems, and x squared isn't division, so we won't run into this first problem, and x <coughs> squared isn't a square root, so we won't run into this second problem. As far as the square root, I mean, I don't expect you to write, you know, that we're taking the square root every time. But I, I hope it does clarify what's going on. We're taking the square root of something. We can't take... the square root of a negative number not being negative is the same as being greater than or equal to zero. So we have an equality that we then need to solve. And Obviously, I'm sort of lab growing these problems to be solvable. You know, if we had like an ugly quadratic under the square root, we might not know what to do, but with these linear inequalities, we're hopefully on pretty solid ground. And as far as like writing stuff down and solving stuff, that's all we want to do today. We're going to, or you're going to, once the fast work comes out, see some square roots and you're going to take whatever's under the square root and you're going to set it greater than or equal to zero. I have just a few kind of parting remarks before I turn this over to you. <coughs> One, I mean, don't put this in your notes necessarily because, because it's an error. Um, but, I mean, I can tell you the number one error people make is that they remember that something is supposed to be greater than or equal to zero, but they forget the details, so they just set the entire square root greater than or equal to zero. Um, 
And again, I, th I mean, to avoid that kind of error, you really want to try to hone down on why you're doing what we're doing. The problem with square roots, I mean, if you want to call it a problem, is that the thing under the square root can't be negative. We saw that here. We saw it here. We saw it here. I mean, it's always, I know, I don't know how helpful it is when your professor stands there and is like, now be sure not to make this error, but it is just something I wanted to point out because it does happen so often on tests and stuff. <clears throat> the next comment, we're now in the kind of miscellaneous comments phase of the class. Domain is often <coughs> called something like the natural or the implied domain. And I'm not like, going to give any problems involving this, but um, we've said that the domain is where a function is defined. And that can be unclear because we look at functions that have real world meaning. Like, let's look at the area of, or let's look at a function which I won't assign any real world meaning. a of r equals pi r squared. And let's ask about the domain. Let's ask where this function is defined. Well, it's went back too far. There's no division, so there's no chance we'll divide by zero. There's no square root, so there's no chance of taking the square root of a negative number. This function is defined everywhere. And there's a fancy symbol for this if you want. It looks like a capital R, except that there are two vertical lines. But you can just say all the numbers if you want. That's fine, too. Well, what if, I mean, I already <laughs> said this, and you might recognize pi r squared anyway. This is a function that takes the radius of a circle and gives you the area of the circle back again. And if you think of it in those terms, well, a radius is a distance. A distance can't be negative, so the <laughs> radius has to be positive. So even though the equation didn't change, even though the equation is still pi r squared, the real world sort of underpinnings of the question are giving you restrictions on where this function is defined. You can't have a negative radius. And do I use this word? Yeah, I do use this word in the classwork. 
When we talk about natural or applied, dom Im applied domains, that's telling us that we're not worrying about real world settings here. We just want to know where the equation is defined. So putting aside this stuff with the radius and the area, the natural domain of this function is all of the real numbers. <laughs> um, the last thing I wanted to say, it's just kind of an observation that um, domain must show up graphically. I mean, a graph is a visual representation of a function, and if the function's defined or if the function's not defined, you should be able to see that. Let me go to Desmos. It was x squared plus the square root of 2x minus 4. Let's try this again. Two x minus four, and I've claimed. I've claimed. Let me get the whiteboard back. That x has to be greater than or equal to two. And if we come back to Desmos and we look at the graph, that's, we see it's this curve here. And if we go down, x is 6, 4.8, x is 3, x is 2.1, x is 2. That's okay. 2 is greater than or equal to, the, to itself. But then the graph stops. I mean, we can see that this curve doesn't seem to exist over here on the left. So we can get the domains graphically. I mean, I think, I mean, I hope, I guess I should, shouldn't say I think, but um, probably most students are pretty fine with solving linear inequalities, and probably it's easier to just solve the inequality rather than go to Desmos or, or Calculator and try to get the domain graphically. But this is certainly an option. And with that, Uh, I will also say, I mean, this is, this is classroom stuff, but if you decide, like, on a test that you're going to use a calculator to find the domain, and you enter something wrong into your calculator, and now you just have the wrong answer, and I have no idea where it came from, that's worse than if you set up the inequality and then make a mistake there.